Hello everybody, it's Terry Mize here. I'm standing in the hill country of Texas. You can see there's a big, beautiful valley off out here. And uh, we've been preaching the gospel here, ministering and, and visiting with friends. And I was just thinking this morning, about 53 years ago, I was an 18 year old kid out in West Texas and uh, I was going to Mexico. And so I wrote a letter to T.L. Osborne in Oklahoma, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Didn't know him, he didn't know me. And I just said, Brother Osborne, I've been told that if you'd write to you, uh, you'd supply some tracks to give to people. And I said, I'm going to Mexico. Could you possibly supply me some Spanish tracks? And he said, yes, come up here. And I went to Tulsa and I thought he was gonna give me a handful or maybe something I could put in my suitcase. He gave me 400,000 Spanish tracks in Bibles. I had to go rent a trailer uh, and pull that thing to Mexico, all way south of Mexico to Oaxaca, and I gave away 400,000 Spanish tracts and Bibles 53 years ago in Mexico as an 18-year-old kid, and I wondered all these years, and only eternity will tell what God has done with those, the souls that were saved, the people that were helped, and I'm waiting till I get to heaven to get a good report and to give Brother Osborne a big hug. Thank you for being our partners. He helped me then. You've helped me since then, and uh, we appreciate our partners. Pray for you every day. God bless you and you are more than conquerors. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. God bless you, and welcome today to More Than Conquerors. That's us. <laughs> That's us. And uh, I think you said years ago, I heard you say over and over, back in, I guess, 40 years ago now, Terry, where you'd say, if you looked under the yellow pages. You look us up under Conquerors More, more Than. than. <laughs> I've, I've quit saying that because kids today don't know what the yellow no, pages are. The, yeah, I know. We're, we're kind of dated when we say yeah. that. But you That's know, like saying go over the Rolodex and get me an address. <laughs> well, now look under your contacts <laughs> and yeah. you'll find us under More Than Conquerors. Conquerors More, more Than. More Than. That's Praise right. God. Not more than losers, not more, more than beggars, but more than, than conquerors. conquerors. You know, and, and it's just absolutely stunning to me how you talk yourself into that. You talk your way. Just like David did with Goliath. Sure. You talk your way sure. into victory. Just like when Jesus raised somebody from the dead, you talk your way sure. into that thing. But you you know the, the thing that's so amazing it's to me God that, talked it talked it into us first. You know, yes. he said in Romans Romans eight thirty seven, you are more than, more conquerors. than conquerors. God said it. What yeah. our idea. Yeah. I didn't well, wake we up didn't one day and say, Hey, guess what? I'm more than a conqueror. No, <laughs> God said that. I'm just agreeing with him. Isn't that marvelous? I just you know, I laugh a lot, but it's just because I just have this joy sometimes. Terry will say something and the only thing I know to do about it is just respond in laughter or either just throwing my hands up and shouting hallelujah. I mean it's just because it's so true. And the joy of hearing you've known me for all these years, you know that the to me the joy of hearing truth is just the oh, most yeah. marvelous thing. When I hear something that I know is the truth, it's like the Holy Ghost stands up in me and starts shouting bravo. Well, Hallelujah. Praise the, the Lord. The Holy Ghost loves truth. And he Jesus loves said you. in John 17, he's, Father, he's, thy, thy word is truth. truth. So and when Paul we hear the word, the, our spirit man gets excited. And the and Paul said the, the spirit of truth mm -hmm. that we have on the inside mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. And so when we say the truth, when your pastor preaches truth, when you hear truth, uh, then there's something that happens on the inside of you. It is such a warm, fuzzy, talk about that, but it's a sense of gratification that you know that someone's telling you the truth. Well, and, and it's... It, it, it's not to be argued with. No, that's truth right. Truth is truth. It's absolute. It's not an opinion. It's not a debate. Right. Right. It's not, honey, what do you think about this? It's just, <laughs> yeah. there it is. It's the it's truth. It's like a judge hitting a gavel. Yeah. It's like, that's it. There, yeah. There's no more discussion about it. It's over. It's like a sermon that I love to preach and have preached it for many, many years out of, out of 2 Kings chapter 5. 
And uh, let me read it to you. Ch- ch- yes. Chapter 6, I'm sorry. Second Kings no, chapter 6. That's right. And it says, The sons of the prophets said to Elisha, Behold now, or look, the place where we live with you is too straight for us. Right. Or it's not big enough. Not big enough. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan, the Jordan River, and take thence every man a beam, and let us make a place there where we may dwell. And he answered them, Go ye. Now, you know, Jesus said, go ye a little bit later right, in the Bible, too. Right. He said, go ye. Go ahead and do it. And one of them said, well, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. Come on, prophet, go with us. Go, let's, <laughs> go with us. We go down there to cut timber and, and build us a place. Yeah. And, uh, and and so he did. He said, so he went with them. And when they came, uh, or he answered, said, I will go. And he went with them. When they came to the place, uh, to the Jordan, they cut down wood. But as one was felling a beam, as one was cutting a tree, this is such a great story. the axe, oh, yeah, I love it. The axe head fell into the water. Well, I know exactly how that feels. You know, I've been in the jungles and well, cut down yes, trees. You, you know, and take an axe, and you come across there and hit that hit that tree. And 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 you know, if you buy an axe, uh, the head sometimes will, will be. Uh, loose enough to slide down, right? Uh, but yet at the top, that wood is, is spread out like this, so the axe head can't come off the top, right? And so uh, when he hit it, when he hit that tree, it the axe head flew off into the water. So it says, as one was fell into being, the axe head fell into the water, and he cried and said, "Alas, master, for it was borrowed." So oh. he said to the prophet. <laughs> I, I lost the axe head, and, and it's a borrowed axe. It's not even my axe. Oh, my goodness. And so uh, the prophet said to him, the man of God said, where fell it or where did it fall? And so he pointed out there and showed him the place where it fell. It says, and he cut he cut down a stick and cast it in thither, and the iron did swim. I love that phrase. The oh my, iron my. did what a God. swim. What a now, God. Now, there's no argument with that. No, there isn't. There's no, hey, axe heads don't float. <laughs> hey, no, he didn't even say it no, floated. Right. He said that's it right. swam. Wow. It said, in the axe, it said, the iron did swim. swim. Therefore, the prophet said, verse 7, take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took, took it. it. Isn't that yeah. a powerful, powerful Miracle. That is amazing. Just a story, a day in the life of the man of God. Yes. <laughs> day in the life That's of the wonderful. people of God. Yes. And, and, and here he had borrowed this axe. We're the people of God. It's going to cost some money. The axe flies out into the water wow. and sinks. Now, now if that happened to the average person, yes. they'd just say, it's lost. Wow. I mean, it's an axe head. It's iron. It's at the bottom of the water now. It's, it's, wow. it's a done deal. Could have, and obviously, it was pretty deep water. But Elisha didn't so think in hopeless. those terms. Yes. Whenever he said, alas, master, for it was borrowed. He just said, well, where did it fall? Well, right out there, you know, 25 yards. We'll, you know? Go, we'll go fix this. And he just said, well, let me cut this stick and pitch out there. And when he did, the iron did swim. That, and so. And, and why? Uh, you know, so, so, it, so it comes from the bottom of the water, swims to the top. And finds the stick. And then comes and swims back over to him. Isn't that something? And the reason I say it swam back over to him is because he said he reached out his hand and took He didn't have to go in the water. He just reached over there and just waited, and, and it just swam into Came his hand. Right up there too. Now, I love that because it's not an argument. It's not a debate. It's not an opinion. Now, if they told that story 135 times later in in, in town, nobody's going to say, folks. nobody's going to say, no, 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 that didn't. Oh, yeah, it happened. Here's the axe. Wow. It's, I've always said, you know, you've heard me say it thousands of times, a man or a woman with a testimony. Yes. Is always at the advantage over a man or a woman with just a doctrine or an argument or an or argument. Opinion. This is, hey, miracles don't happen. Well, yeah, but here's the axe. <laughs> Yes, hallelujah. You know, so my hitchhiker story. <laughs> what about Terry? That that didn't happen. Yeah, but a guy shot at me five times. Yeah, the bullets no, right, didn't hit me. Right. Thank you. You remember Jesus. one time you and you and Dean and Jackie and I were in a convention and and uh, the pastor asked me to get up and tell the, the story. In fact, his brother John Osteen asked me to get up and yeah. tell the story about my hitchhiker right. uh, being shot at five times. Yes, the bullets didn't hit me. I was there. And so I, I told the story. <laughs> and later that night, another preacher from the states got up and preached, and he said, well, I'll tell you one thing, Brother Terry, and I'm right, just sitting the out there in the, the audience sermon. with you and Dean and Jackie. Right. And he said, I'll tell you one thing, Brother Terry, that might have worked for you that time, and next time you'll get the bullet in your belly. Yeah, we it, were It's there. just like, well, 
Why would you say why that? Why would you be such a fool? And why would you? Why would you it, hold it was that a on fact. somebody? It was an absolute fact. fact. The bullets didn't hit me. The iron did swim. You know, yeah. and Lazarus came out of the grave. <laughs> you, you know, and Jesus walked on water. Yeah. And and the, the the blind guy said, "I don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. I just know I was blind. Now I can see." You can't argue. No, you can't with a miracle. You know, in John chapter, in Acts chapter three and chapter four, yeah, when Peter and John sure. heal the, the the crippled man that had right. been there all of his life, he's over forty years old, yes. been there all his life at the beautiful gate of the temple begging, and Peter and John walked by him that day, and he said, "Alms, alms for the poor," and and Peter said, "Look at me," and he looked at him, expecting to receive something. The Bible right. said, and Peter said that famous statement. He said, "Silver and gold have I have none." I that such as I have, give wow. I thee in the name of the yes. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And he grabbed uh-huh. him by his right hand and jerked him up. And immediately it says that his ankle bones received strength. Wow. And he went running and leaping and praising, praising the Lord. God. And so later when the Pharisees and the church people didn't want wanted to hide it, <laughs> wanted to cover it up and sweep it under the My rug. Goodness. And they arrested Peter and John. Uh, and they talked amongst sometimes. themselves and they said, they said, but a notable miracle right. has been done in the midst of us. In other words, right in our face, God right. did a miracle. Yes. And they said, and we cannot deny it. And then, and then another Those verse said, we can say nothing words. against it. You can't deny a miracle, and you can't say anything against a miracle. Right. And I was preaching this in, uh, in fact, I was preaching it for our friends, uh, Mike and Brenda uh, Williams. Williams in Wills Point, Texas. Wow. And I preached this years ago, and, there, and there's a young teenage boy in the congregation that Sunday morning. Yeah. And it got on the inside of him. When I preached this message and said, and the iron did swim. Yeah. It got so on the inside of him that he went home and wrote on his fingers. He put, the iron did swim. Well. And, and his football team was playing, you know, they're playing football. Right. And so he'd get down in his in his stance, and the guy right across from him would read it, the iron did swim. And so what does that mean? He said, you're fixing to find out. <laughs> And, and they went to state. I mean, they they went they they won all their games and went to state. And, uh, and just because that that, that got on the inside of That's him, right. that it's a fact. That's right. It's a miracle. God did the supernatural. The iron, iron did, did swim. swim. Hallelujah. And so I love that story in 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 Second Kings chapter six. And I just I refer to it a lot. I think about it a lot. That the iron did swim. That the dead was raised. You know, that little girl. Uh, the baby Blanca that I raised from the yes, dead back yes, in the jungles yes. of Guatemala uh, back in 1979, March mm-hmm. of 79. And uh, she was dead. And after 12, I, I prayed for her for 12 hours. Right. And God raised her from the dead. And somebody could say, well, yeah, but that doesn't, yeah, but, you, but God raised her from the dead. Yeah, but you know, God raised her from the dead. And in fact, she's still alive today. Her name's Blanca. She's, she's, uh, what is she, 41 years old now? Yeah, that was right. 1979, so she's 41 years old now. She's married, got three kids, serves God. Right. And I still hear from her from time to time because our dear friend who's the missionary there, Barbara Stolfus, yes. her husband Elam is in heaven now, but Barbara's God still there, Barbara. She's still in the so Patin. Faithful. The Patin means the jungle. It's the jungle of Guatemala. Barbara's still lady. there, and we'll talk to Barbara from time to time. And she'll say, well, I saw Blanca the other day and talked to Blanca. And, uh, you know, that you just can't argue with that. She was no. dead. I had an American medical doctor with me, my dear friend, Dr. Bobby Daniel from Tulsa, and uh, and he pronounced her dead. And I mean, she's dead for 12 hours. And God raised her from the dead. You can't argue you with can't that. Argue the iron did that. swim. That's right. The dead was raised. The blind did see. <laughs> the cripple did walk. That's right. You know, the deaf did hear. What a God. The bullets didn't hit me. Yes. And, and so when you're when you're up against something, right? No here comes the devil. Is. No matter what it is. When you're is. up against something, here comes the devil. Right. And he says, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's right. not going to work. But what you do is you come out with things like this and say, well, devil, the iron did swim. Well, devil, my bills were paid. That's right. Well, devil, I did have those babies you said I couldn't have. Right. Well, devil, the blind did see. Right. Devil, Lazarus did come out of the grave. Devil, Brother Terry did raise that baby from the dead. Devil, the bullets didn't hit him. And, and there's just facts that you just keep hitting the devil with. Just saying, the iron didn't swim, the dead was raised, the blind didn't. And pretty soon the devil's like, wait, wait, I quit. And he'll go find somebody else to pick on. Well, and sometimes you just have to, uh, you it, know, preach to hell. Well, the gospel is always the, the goodness of declarative supernatural. statements. Yeah, that's right. It's exactly. not a debate. It's not an argument. Right. It's, it's God sent Jesus. Right. You know, Jesus was born of a virgin. 
Jesus lived on this earth as a man. Jesus died on the cross for us. He died a substitutionary death on the cross for us. Jesus took my sins. Jesus paid for my sickness. By his stripes, I'm healed. Jesus came out of the grave. Jesus was raised from the dead. Jesus is alive today. By believing on him, you can be saved and live with him forever. Those are all declarative gospel statements that the devil can't argue with. He can just say, but, 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 no, no, no. No. Well, that's how He's you going preach. now that Jesus is alive and well. That's how you preach your crusades, and that's how you have to deal with the lost, and that's how you have to talk to hell at the same time as well, because it's those declarative, absolute oh, yes. statements of truth that are facts in the realm of the supernatural, and that if people will believe them in the natural, then they'll have the supernatural power of God. And forget, Their souls will be saved forever. Absolutely. And forget how you feel. Yeah. Your feelings don't matter. Your feeling, you know, we're living in such a goofy society today. It's all, <laughs> oh, honey, how do you feel yeah. about that? Who oh cares how you feel? Oh my Your goodness. feelings will change tomorrow. Get on the word of God and start making declarative statements that I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. I am born again. I am a Christian. Jesus Christ is Lord. That's exactly right. There is no God but Jehovah. Yeah. And, and you know, one of the best things to do to preach yourself out of your feelings is to start yelling at the top of your lungs. I'm saved by the blood of the Lord Absolutely. Jesus Christ. I'm the head and not the tail. Absolutely. Jesus died for my sins. Absolutely. I'm going to live forever. My name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Yeah. I believe yeah. the Bible. God lives in my heart. There is nothing that God will lie to me about. The devil is a liar and I'm not going to live by lies. I'm going to live by Jesus the truth. Jesus said in John eight forty four, the devil's a liar. Yes. And he's been a father of lies from the beginning. He's been a That's liar right. from the beginning. From the beginning. And then Titus 1 2 says, God cannot lie. <laughs> that right there is so simple. The but devil's you know, a liar. God cannot lie. The devil's a liar. Exactly. God cannot lie. The devil's a liar. God cannot lie. Well, what else is there? Well, and you have to preach to yourself all over and over and over again. You have to take charge of your own soul and you have to take charge of what you think for forever. Uh, up until just recent in recent decades, uh, everybody's science included all thought that the brain was just you just you, your brain was just in charge and it just did everything. You couldn't do anything with it. You had to just live with what it was there, whether you were uh, low IQ, high IQ, if you were tormented by evil spirits or tormented by fear and worry, that was just who you were. But now in recent years, science has even agreed with the word of God that you have what you say. Yeah, is yeah, that you can yeah. change from out, you, out of your heart and out of your mouth, which is the same wonderful, uh, I guess, chemistry, you know, uh, that, that you use that by believing in the heart and confessing with the mouth that you are born again. It's that same thing that will deliver you. That same formula will deliver you from any oppressive thing that the enemy is trying to bring into absolutely. your life. Faith works on at the same on every level. Oh, absolutely. And, and, and the longer time goes on and the more technology is discovered. Right. And the more scientific facts are discovered, the more science agrees with the Bible. Right. For a long time ago, you know, there was a big gaps because they couldn't prove anything. Said, so, well, the Bible says it. Yeah, but we can't prove it. And now more and more and more science right. is proving right. uh, what the Bible says all along, what God knew all along. Well, the, the deal with, you know, so many people in our generation that we have seen everything from the media to the movies to politicians to church people is that you're just sitting around all the time babysitting your emotional realm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you're trying to find things that will emotionally babysit you and uh, help you. Uh, you know, try to make it through the night, you know, make it through the day, you know, how to how to coexist with oppression and depression and all of these things. And the Bible doesn't teach that. The Bible teaches total deliverance Absolutely. to where you are not held captive by your emotions, your thoughts of fear and worry yes. and and yes. or even on the negative side of anger and bitterness and resentment. I have a we, we just saw our great friends in Oregon, uh, my wonderful friend Donna Perigini, who is written some marvelous children's books Tremendous and, the, books. and the, the one that we laughed about so much that they're even now using in prisons that uh, she wrote is called don't hug a grudge don't hug a grudge and they're sharing it with prisoners and people that are, are you know convicted felons yeah, yeah, yeah. that everything that they have done in their life has been out of revenge and resentment and sure. bitterness so they had a and, grudge against yeah <laughs> and so when we learn how to not hug the grudge 
then you're free and you're set free from it. You're no longer babysitting your emotional realm sure. all the time. And the word of God is what delivers you the truth. And you know, you parents that have small children, you ought to get a hold of those books. You get them through Amazon, Donna Perigini. Right. And she's written four of them. Don't Hug a Grudge. Uh, do Angels Go, do camping, angels go camping, camping? Talking about, talking about angelic the, protection. The angels of the Lord in camp rant about them that love and fear the Lord. And, and then two others, I don't remember the names of. The Flight of, of Orville um, oh, yeah. Caterpillar. And then, no, The Flight of Amelia Earhart. No, it, it's about a little butterfly. And then the other one's about a caterpillar. And they're both so cute. There's four books by Donna Perugini. It's spelled like Peru Perugini, P-E-R-U-G-I-N-I. And uh, my goodness, those books are just stellar. I, I thought about broad, bringing one with me. In fact, we're here in the Hill Country after just seeing them. And we are here with, in a friend's lovely home uh, talking to you and ministering to you. And we're going to be preaching in Texas yeah, here. Dick and Donna drove down, made a nine-hour nine nine hour trip. Hour trip to come be in service Washington. with us for two nights. Yes. And, and it was free service, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. and they used to be in our church in um, in Corpus Christi. They were members of our church where Dean and I pastored all those years. And she and Dick were just marvelous, wonderful, <laughs> low maintenance church members. And uh, I just, they were such a joy. They were like the household of Stephanus, you know, like mm, Paul said, mm -hmm. they refreshed us. Yeah. And uh, they came this last time and were with us again. And, and, and Paul, Paul said about that family, he said, they've addicted themselves. Yes, they addicted. Yeah. Isn't that stunning? Yeah, that's such a marvelous word that. That we think of addiction as being something bad, yeah. But Paul said that they've addicted themselves to 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 the work of the ministry. They've right. addicted themselves to the things of God. Uh, they, yes. And he said they've refreshed my spirit. Yeah. Isn't that a nice thing? The household of Stephanus. He said they are addicted. <laughs> I'm telling you, I just am so refreshed by by wonderful things. As Terry is talking about these things today, it's so stunning to me to realize that God literally has a plan. For us to succeed and have victory every single time, absolutely. we're back to we are more than more, conquerors. Absolutely, we are more than conquerors. There's no reason for us to fail except that we quit and give up and start babysitting our emotions and start babysitting our feelings, or we let somebody offend us, or we get offended in, in some way where we have a grudge or resentment towards way back even our parents, and we get to where we're just. We're just thrown off. We're just knocked off our course. Um, and we, we are no longer focusing on the power of God and the word of God, the promises of God. And we get off and we get over into areas that we have no business being in. Like Psalm 131 says, I will not exercise myself in things that are too high, too for, high me. for me. I'll never understand why they did that. I'll never be able to understand why that happened. So if I'll just... Uh, like the verse two of Psalm 131 says, like a weaned child, have I quieted my soul within me? Well, you do that with the word of God. Mm -hmm. You begin to speak these promises. The iron did swim. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, the Israelites walked on dry ground. Yeah. I mean, the devil just can't argue with that. <laughs> Whenever he comes to you That's and says, exactly I'm going right. to get you this time. You know, you're not going to have enough money to pay your bills. You're not going to, you know, your kids are going to sit. You just come back with what well, the iron did swim. Yeah. <laughs> Lazarus raised from, raised from the that dead. That makes it so simple. And you <laughs> can just say, so what? Dry ground. So what? Yeah. You know, just just make a big sign in your house with big giant letters that says, so what? Mm -hmm. So what, devil? And then put underneath it, the iron did swim. Yeah, absolutely. You know, to remind you, mental that's, that's hooks, visual in, hooks. That scripture is in uh, 1 Corinthians 16 and verse 15. Paul said, I beseech Is you, she? brethren. You know, the house of Stephanus, that, it, that is the first fruits of Achaia. Of Greece. Yeah, when he was preaching in, in uh, Greece. And that they have addicted themselves to the, to the ministry, ministry of, of the, the saints. saints. Not ministry to the saints. Right. But they've addicted themselves to the ministry of, of the, saints. the saints. We're going to be busy about the master's business. Right. We're the saints. We're we have a job. We have a business to do. And it's to get the gospel to the world. We're going right. to addict ourselves to it. We're going to help people. We're going to make sure they stay on their job. Because the word is just all truth. Yes, it's it all is. It's all facts. Those are such sacred words, sacred, sacred words that describe the ability of God to move through a human being, mm -hmm. to strengthen somebody mm -hmm. else, mm -hmm. to do the work and the call of mm -hmm. God. Mm -hmm. And that's why we are so challenged by purpose. Terry and I are motivated by purpose because we want you to see how important your job is. Amen. I, I, I agree. I like it.
<laughs> the Iron are, did swim. Are we out of time? No, we got three minutes. Okay. Well, we just want you to know, uh, uh, you know, as we've been talking here today, how very, very important you are. You, if those of you that are partners that pray for us, or you partner with other ministries, don't quit. Don't let the enemy intimidate you or circumstances uh, destroy your enthusiasm on any level. Just stay the course. Start yelling, comm taking command of your brain. Don't yell at your emotions or disappointments. Yeah, th they're all real. They're all right there. They're true. They did happen. But so what? You're going to have to still it's do it. It's true they did happen, but yes. it's not true. It's not. It's that's not it. the truth. And you've said the, that so many times. The truth is whatever the word says. Yes, and that's why you have to just always have something in your mouth. Mm -hmm. And I love those scriptures there. I think it's in Second Samuel talking about Hannah. Uh, when she, you know, finally had that baby, you know, had her child Samuel and where, where she had been so tormented and, and, and persecuted by uh, the other woman in the family. Mm -hmm. And she just said, now is my mouth open wide over my enemies. That always gives you an attitude, doesn't it? <laughs> it does. It just, it just makes you want to swagger a little bit because she said it and said, I can't imagine the passion she said that with oh, sure. after uh, being so tormented and, and crying before the altar of God. And then the man of God comes in and tells her, well, a year from now, you'll have a baby. And it, and it looked impossible. Right. And yet she had that child and she said, yippee, now, <laughs> now is, my, is mouth. my mouth open wide over my enemies. And I am just, I Any take, nanny boo -boo. yeah, really no joke. And so that's why I think you should just start doing that no matter how you feel. You know, you have to open your mouth. I can't do it for you. Billy Graham, you know, Franklin Graham, nobody else, Terry Mize, Kenneth Copeland, nobody else can do it for you. You have to do it for yourself. And you have to be the best preacher you know. You're the one that's with you 24 hours a day. It's what comes out of your mouth that's going to change the course of your life and the circumstances that you're living in. Because and, it, it may be true. Yes. The devil's picking on you. Yes. It may be true. You've received a diagnosis or prognosis from the doctor. It's not that's too right. good. It may be true. You've received an ultimatum or declaration from an employer or a family member of the government, but you can take the truth. Jesus said, thy word is truth. That's you right. can take the truth and slam it up against something that's just true or just a fact and change yes. it. Hallelujah. Where it's no longer true and it's that's no longer exactly a fact right. because truth is the only thing that trumps truth. Truth is the only thing that changes facts. So we always go back to the Word of God. That's why I've said for 53 years now, I know yes, that God have. is good and I know no, His, His word, word is, is truth. truth. Not true, but absolute truth. Hey, we're at Brother Copeland's meeting this week. We're about out of time, but oh, we're, yeah. we're at KC, we're at uh, Southwest Believers That's in right. Fort Worth and with a whole bunch of other fanatics. So always make sure your friends, <laughs> friends are, fanatics, are fanatics and uh, we're having a good time. We always want to go somewhere and get our spirit fed and yes. filled up. Once we've been pouring out and pouring out, the Lord told me when I was just a teenager, so when you come back from mission fields and you go get filled up again. And so that's what why we show up at these meetings to be yes, fed, to be fed and ourselves and be a know. support as well. That's right. You know, and we're, we're, li we're living in, in the devil's backyard, everybody. Mm -hmm. And we are right here at the end of the age and we are those on whom this has been laid in yep. our laps yep. to do the work we of the gospel. We are they on whom the end of the age and has come. You may wake up some morning and start praying, and you may start out in tears, but I'm telling you, if you'll do what Terry just told you to do and say what we've been telling you to say, you're going to wake. You're going to wade through that prayer and end up shouting at the end of it. By the time you say Amen, look the devil in the eye and tell him the iron did swim. <laughs> that's right. Well, we want to tell you one more time. You are more, more than, than conquerors, conquerors. And bye that's bye. a fact. That's right. <laughs> that's right.